endocannabinoids, these are, this is the short name for endogenous cannabinoids. A cannabinoid is a compound which acts on um, two receptors. One receptor is found mainly in the brain, the other receptor is found mainly in the periphery. But surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, uh, during certain diseases, the second receptor, which is not present in the brain, starts to pop up. All of a sudden, it, uh, uh, it's available there. So the suggestion has, uh, was by us, by many others, that actually this receptor, which is not found in the brain, the CB2 receptor is a protective, uh, uh, is part of a protective mechanism. I mean, we have uh, protective systems in our body. The immune system is a protective system. It guards us against microbes and viruses, things like that. And if we didn't have an immune system, we'll be dead within a week, probably eaten up by microbes. Well, but we have the immune system and it guards us. But not everything, not all attacks on us are by uh, things like microbes or viruses, like pro uh, proteins. There are other things, breaking a bone or having a head uh, uh, smashed or something like that. I mean, these are major things. Well, actually, uh, the body has developed uh, protective systems of this type, and indeed the endocannabinoids are part of this protective system acting through uh, the CB2 receptor, probably also treated through the CB1 receptor, but through the CB2 receptor, most definitely. And we have seen, for example, in brain trauma, that... Uh, uh, both the CB1 and the CB2 receptors start working over time trying to reduce the damage that has been caused uh, by a head injury. Uh, we have seen, and I've submitted a paper now, that uh, osteoporosis uh, is uh, reduced, the damage of osteoporosis the actual osteoporosis itself is reduced by the endogenous cannabinoids. The endo endocannabinoid system seems to work. It's not the only one, but it seems to work there. And uh, not very surprisingly, we have found that additional compounds, which actually don't bind to the cannabinoid receptors, but are very close chemically to these endogenous cannabinoids, these compounds which we call an endocannabinoid-like compounds, a strange word. But anyway, these compounds act on osteoporosis. We have uh, uh, animal mice that uh, uh, under certain conditions can develop osteoporosis, and we see that their bones, uh, 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 well, uh, show osteoporotic features. We see that if we give these compounds, whether it is a endocannabinoid, like 2-AG, or whether it's those endocannabinoid-like compounds, uh, which we uh, found, they improve the situation, they improve the osteoporosis. Now, this is not so surprising. Uh, if, one, if one goes back and looks at what's going on in the Mediterranean countries, for example, uh, there is less osteoporosis than in Northern Europe. And uh, according to some Greek statistics, if you like to read Greek statistics before you go to bed and sleep, according to Greek statistics, um, this is due to, ole to olive oil. And all the people are in the Mediterranean use olive oil. Now, olive oil contains oleic acid. And the compound which acts on osteoporosis is a derivative of oleic acid. It is an endocannabinoid-like compound. So this is what's happening with bones. Uh, we have a lot of other indications that uh, the action of the CB2 receptor is mainly a protective action. So we have uh, protective action in, in brain injury. We have protective action in bones, we have protective action in a lot of inflammatory conditions, and we have looked at rheumatoid arthritis, for example. It is a very 
powerful, these compounds are very powerful in certain uh, inflammatory conditions. Now, an inflammatory condition um, in rheumatoid arthritis, for example, it's an autoimmune disease. The immune system attacks the body itself. I mean, the immune system is normally supposed to be there to attack uh, proteins that come from the outside, but sometimes uh, it uh, uh, doesn't know what it's doing and attacks our own proteins, our own body. Now, we found that the endocannabinoid system protects us.